I'm back a week early. If you remember, I did when I did my last video on Tuesday, July 10th, I said I wasn't going to do my next free video, video that's free to the general YouTube public until Monday, August 13th. Yeah, which would be one week from today. So I came back a week early. This is the second time I broke my hiatus a few days early. Last time I did a lengthy hiatus away from doing free YouTube videos was in the month of May. I said I was going to go the entire month of May without doing any free videos for the general YouTube public. But then on May 29th, I ended up doing a video. So I came back roughly three days early. Yeah, I said I wasn't going to do my first video until June 1st, but I came back May 29th. And again, in July, I did my last video July 10th. I said I wasn't going to come back until August 13th. But I'm coming back. Excuse me. Now, as you know, I write for the Negro Manosphere. And unless I'm traveling or on vacation, I, I have an article that's published every Monday, which would be today. Now, I just put this article just got published, what, about three hours ago. This article got published about three, three hours ago, and already I've gotten a handful of... Uh, comments and criticisms from both men and women. I think I've gotten already two Facebook inbox messages from women about my article and three or four inbox messages from men about my article. You can find it in the comment section below. You can find it in the comment section below. Some of you are funny, man. Some of you are all funny. And I'm going to be repeating some stuff a lot of you all have heard before. I'll start with this, man. I, I, I was involved briefly in a podcast live stream here on YouTube on Friday. I usually never participate in anything on Fridays and Saturdays. But I just got back from Vancouver last week and uh, I was just decided to relax on a Friday. And uh, I happened to be listening to this, this podcast live stream by a host who you guys know I've had beef with. I ain't going to say his name, but y'all know who it is. Um, but anyway, I heard him make the statement to a woman. He had a woman on his live stream with him and he got to talking about my approach, the Mo One approach, which is what caused me to participate in the live stream. He is basically throwing a couple jabs at the Mo One approach. And one of the things he said was, he said, and I might be slightly paraphrasing his words, but it was to the effect of, he said, you can't have success with women by just telling them straightforwardly that all you want to do is fuck them. He said, he basically said, it's virtually impossible to have successful women by straightforwardly telling them that all you want to do is fuck them. What am I about to say? What am I about to say? Insert dog face here. Man, let me tell you something, man. I've said, you've heard me say this before. There's at least two types of guys when it comes to their knowledge and wisdom and insight about women. There's guys who think they know women and there's guys who do know women. Let me repeat that. There's men who think they know women. They think they know women. Then there's guys like myself who really know women. Don't mistake the two. 
See, some of y'all motherfuckers listen to a lot of motherfuckers on YouTube who think they know women. They think they know women, but they don't. They buy into the shit that women want them to believe about themselves. That's what they do. The men who think they know women are the men who buy in to everything that women want you to believe about them. But see, then there's that one or two percent of men on earth, like myself, who really know women. How can I tell when a man thinks he knows women, but he really don't? I can tell you at least three things that a man can say that lets me know he thinks he knows women, but he really don't. Number one is men who say you have to develop some type of emotional connection or, or he, he, you have to get a woman to, to develop emotions for you before you can get them in bed. If you believe that, you think you know women, but you don't. Okay? You think you know women, but you don't. So if you believe that some type of emotional bond or emotional connection is a mandatory prerequisite for a woman engaging in sex with you, you don't know women. You think you know women, but you don't know women. Number two, men who say, well, you got to spend money on women in order to get them in bed. Ain't no woman going to sleep with no broke motherfucker. You got to spend money on women and particularly good looking women to get them in bed. Once again, if you truly believe that, you think you know women. You think you know women. You don't know women. You think you do. And see, that's one of those things I already said, that women, that's what women want you to believe. They want you to believe that shit. They want you to believe that spending money on them is a mandatory prerequisite to getting them in bed. That's what they want you to believe. Man, anybody who's hung around me in real life and knows me really well and knows some of the women I've dealt with in my life, they know. Man, I've pulled eights, nines, and even one or two tens in bed during times when I was broke and unemployed. Believe that shit. I've rarely done any whining and dining of women to get them in bed. Rarely. Like, I can count on, on one hand the number of women that I spent a decent amount of money on before I had sex with them. Now, I've spent money on women after I've had sex with them. But as far as before I had sex with them, at maximum, it might be five women in my entire life that I spent more what you would call an above average amount of money on before I had sex with them. But just about every woman I've had sex with, particularly casual sex, not a woman who I looked at as a potential girlfriend, but casual sex, I don't spend no money on no women. And if I do, it's maybe like $10, $15, $20. So all you men who believe that second thing, that's bullshit. You don't know women. Don't act like you do. Tell y'all motherfuckers y'all ain't on my level. Third and final thing that lets me know you think you know women, but you don't. And this is related to my article in the Negro Manosphere today. It's men who say, well, and this relates back to uh, this podcast host comment about you can't tell a woman that all you want to do is fuck her. Basically, he was implying that you got to give women at least a misleading impression that you want to spend just as much, if not more time with them non-sexually than sexually. Now, I've heard other guys say that. He ain't the only one. I know even pickup artists and certain dating coaches who have said that. That in order to have successful women, you got to either be genuinely willing to spend a significant amount of, of time with that woman non-sexually or at least give them the misleading impression that you're willing to do so. 
That's bullshit. And I'm living testimony to that. That's bullshit. Just about every woman I've had casual sex with, you know what I told them? I told them straight up that all I wanted to do was fuck them. I told them straight up. Starting with my college days. That's where I, what caused a few of my frat brothers to nickname me The Legend. D-A Legend. The Legend. Because I was one of the few guys on campus that would tell a woman, all I want to do is fuck you. I don't want to go to the movies with you. I don't want to walk in the park with you. I don't want to go on a lunch day to dinner day with you. I just want to go over your crib or have you come over my crib so we can fuck. And you know what women would do? Most of them, for the next two, three, four, five minutes, they would give me a negative reaction. Oh my God, I can't believe you're talking to me like that. I'm not a hoe. I'm not a slut. How dare you talk to me like that? I, you know, I'm a respectable, classy woman and blah, 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 blah. But you know what? And y'all know my stories. The, my longtime followers, y'all know my stories. I ain't telling you nothing new. A lot of those same women who gave me all that negative feedback, those criticisms and insults and all that shit, either that same day or a few days later or a couple weeks later or in some cases a month or two later, those same women who gave me negative feedback and hurled criticisms and insults at me was sucking my dick and I was fucking them. Those same women that told me Basically, I would never have sex with a guy who, who, who only wants sex from me, nothing else but sex. Those same women who told me that shit, I was fucking them. And that's what, that's what helped me develop my two archetypes of women. As you know, I got five archetypes of women. The reciprocator, the rejector, the wholesome pretender, the erotic hypocrite, and the manipulative time waster. The reciprocator, rejector, wholesome pretender, erotic hypocrite, and manipulative time waster. And it was those experiences with women I just described that helped me solidify the two archetypes of the wholesome pretender and erotic hypocrite. That's what made me formulate those two archetypes. The wholesome pretender and erotic... Because that's what a wholesome pretender and erotic hypocrite are. Wholesome pretender and erotic hypocrite are basically women that want you to believe A wholesome pretender is a woman that wants you to believe that she only engages in sex with a man that's her long-term boyfriend, fiance, or husband. But deep down, if you're persuasive and seductive, you're going to get that pussy. If she's attracted to you, if she has some degree of attraction to you, number one, and on top of that, you're persuasive and seductive, you're going to get that pussy with a wholesome pretender, even though she's trying to get you to buy into the belief that she only engages in sex with a man that's her long-term boyfriend, fiance, or husband. Erotic hypocrite is a woman that's similar to a wholesome pretender, but a little bit different. Her main thing, the one difference, hers, her facade involves money. Just related to, like I started off this thing saying that one of the second beliefs a lot of men have is that you got to spend money on women, and particularly good-looking women, to get them in bed. See, that's what an erotic hypocrite wants you to believe. A woman who's an erotic hypocrite, she wants you to believe you got to spend money on her to get, to get that pussy. She wants you to believe that you got to wine and dine her, buy her materialistic gifts, and spend a significant amount of money on her to get that pussy. But again... If you know how to be cocky in the right way, you know how to be persuasive in the right way, you know how to be seductive in the right way. In other words, your verbal game is extra A-plus tight. You can fuck an erotic hypocrite without spending shit on her, like I have since the age of 22. Some of y'all think y'all know women, but you don't. Y'all need to even y'all need to just stop talking. Especially if you call yourself some type of dating guru, dating relationship, dating advisor, relationship guru. Y'all need to just stop talking because y'all don't know shit. Y'all don't know shit about women. Like I do. Y'all ain't on my level. And if that makes me sound cocky or immodest, who gives a fuck? I know my shit. 
Some of y'all think y'all know y'all shit, but y'all don't. Again, y'all buy into beliefs that women want you all to be, uh, buy into and believe. I wrote an article, uh, what, two weeks ago about being women's other man. Where I basically said between the age of roughly 17 and 37, I was a woman's other man as much as 35, 36 times. Maybe even as much as 40 times. Yeah, between that 20 year period, between the age of 17 and roughly 37, I fucked at least 35 or more women that had a husband at the time I fucked them, had a fiance at the time I fucked them, or had a long-term boyfriend at the time I fucked them. Guess what? I didn't have to develop any emotional attachment to fuck those women. I didn't spend no money on them. It, matter of fact, in most cases, they spent money on me. And I didn't spend any time with them non-sexually. So that nullifies all three of those things that a lot of men believe in. That nullifies all three things. No emotional attachment was involved. Didn't spend no money. And didn't spend any time with them non-sexually. What does that tell you about women? Huh? Come on, man. I always tell y'all wake the fuck up. And it ain't just women who are in relationships that follow that category. I've had casual sex with a number of um, single women who I, I didn't develop any emotional attachment with them before I fucked them. I didn't spend any significant amount of money on them before I fucked them. And I didn't spend any significant amount of time with them non-sexually before I fucked them. That's, the, that's what Mo One is all about, man. I don't give women the disingenuous and misleading impression that I want to, that I value their non-sexual uh, attention and companionship more than I do. I don't give women a disingenuous and misleading impression that I've developed some type of emotional feelings for a woman when I know deep down I have not. No true alpha male would do that shit. Let me repeat that. No true alpha male would ever do that shit because that shit's weak and it's cowardly. That's what punks do. Yeah, you heard me say it. That's what punks do. And I ain't no punk. I ain't got to make a woman feel like I'm falling in love with her to get the pussy. Are you serious? I ain't got to make a woman believe that I want to go to the movies with her once or twice a week, a dinner with her once or twice a week, and all that other lying, misleading bullshit in order to get the pussy. I know how to get a woman's pussy wet just by being a fucking man. That's what I do. Y'all motherfuckers think you know women and you don't. Spare me. A woman's pussy getting wet is biological. It's biological. It ain't got shit to do with money. It's biological. If you know a woman's biological triggers, you could get a woman's pussy wet without pulling one dollar out your wallet. Ain't got shit to do with money. Was money around from the beginning of time? No, fucking was. Was taking our woman out to on a dinner date and a, and a lunch date around since the beginning of time? No, fucking was. Was monogamy around since the beginning of time? No, fucking was. I already pointed out the book. Read Stephanie Kuhn's book. Read Stephanie Kuhn's book, Marriage a History. Marriage a History. That book tells you, I've mentioned this book a few times. That book points out, man, monogamy, the idea of strictly monogamous marriages and strictly monogamous relationships has only been around for about 4,500 to 5,000 years. Now, that sounds like a long time. But human beings have been on this earth at minimum for 200,000 years. Some people say as long as 300,000 or more years. Let's go with the minimum. We've been on earth, human beings have been on planet earth 
in our current form at least 200,000 years. That's the minimum. 200,000 years. Monogamy's only been around 5,000 years. That's a drop in the fucking bucket. So monogamy ain't been around since the beginning of time, but fucking hands. <laughs> when y'all gonna wake up, man? And when I start yelling at you and you hear anger and passion in my voice, I ain't trying to be mean-spirited at mean-spirited towards you. I'm trying to wake you the fuck up, man. I'm trying to wake you the fuck up. Because y'all still in the matrix, so to speak. Y'all still in the matrix, man. I done been out the matrix for years. I ain't boxed in by a bunch of invalid beliefs and invalid attitudes that a lot of you men operate by. I've been out the box for a while, man. I'm a different cookie in the box, man. I know women. I know women. There's a lot of things about women that they want you to believe is true because it's, it's conducive to their self-serving needs and objectives. A lot of the beliefs they want you to have are conducive to their self-serving needs and objectives. But the fact of the matter is they ain't true, man. They ain't true. Again, I'm going to recap the three, man. The idea that you, you have to develop an emotional attraction to a woman you have to have feelings for her or get her to have feelings for you before you have sex with her. That's bullshit. Beta males buy into that belief all the time, but it ain't true. I'm telling you, man, man, I fucked women, dude, less than an hour after I met them. I'm talking about good looking women. I'm talking about women who in their social circle had a reputation for being a classy good girl. And I fucked those same women within an hour after I met them. You think I developed some strong emotions for them or they developed strong emotions for me within an hour after we met? Are you serious? Again, I fuck sevens, eights, nines, and even at least one or two tens uh, within hours after I met them, days after I met them, or within a week after I met them without spending no more than like $15, $20, on them. Huh? And some of y'all believe that's impossible? Are you serious? And the non-sexual companionship thing, man. Are you, uh, that's the most laughable of the three. You think all women only fuck motherfuckers who spend time with them both sexually and non-sexually. Do you really, do you really believe that shit? I hope none of my long-time followers believe that shit. But see, that's why you got a lot of liars out here. A lot of guys who are misleading manipulators, what I refer to simply as lying womanizers. I always say, man, there's a difference a lot of people think womanizers are womanizers. No, they're not. There's at least two types of womanizers. There's honest womanizers, what I tend to call true players. True players. Some people call them pimps and max too. True players don't lie to women or mislead women to get them in bed. They tell women straight up that they want that pussy. And in most cases, they tell them straight up that all they want is that pussy. That's a true player. Then you got lying womanizers. Guys who fuck a lot, multiple women by making those women believe that they've fallen for them emotionally when they're really not. They get women in bed by making those women believe that they want a strictly monogamous relationship with them when they really don't. They get women in bed by making those women believe that they place a high value on their non-sexual attention and companionship when they really don't. And if they marry or engaged to be married or already got a girlfriend, they make women believe that they're single when they're not. That's a lying womanizer. Now, can you get some pussy being a lying womanizer? Sure you can. I would never deny that. Sure you can. But it's a cowardly way to do it. 
That's my argument against that. It's a cowardly way to do it, but you can do it. It's a cowardly way. It ain't no, you can't call yourself no fucking alpha operating that way. And you damn, damn sure can't call yourself no true player operating that way, but you can get some pussy that way. I call that going through the side door. You getting pussy by going through the side door. I go through the front door. See, lying womanizers and manipulative time wasters are two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same coin. That's what they are. They two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the same coin, man. In what way? Because here's the deal. If you're a lying womanizer, what you generally do, as already alluded to, is you give women the misleading impression that you want to spend time with them both sexually and non-sexually, when in actuality, you really only want to spend time with them sexually. That's what lying womanizers do. They give women the impression they want to spend time with women both sexually and non-sexually when they really only want to spend time with that woman sexually. And once they've spent time with that woman sexually two times, three times, five times, ten times, fifteen times, they just dump her. That's the MO of a lying womanizer. For the first few days, first few weeks, even the first two to three months, they give women a misleading impression that they enjoy spending time with them both sexually and non-sexually. But once they've gotten pussy from that woman to their, their hearts and dick satisfaction, they just dump the woman. That's what lying womanizers do. On the female end, Manipulate the women who I refer to in my books as manipulative time wasters. They essentially do the same thing, but a little different. What manipulative time wasters do when they meet men is they give men the impression that they want to enjoy your companionship both sexually and non-sexually. But what they do is they string you along for a few days or a few weeks or two or three months or longer without giving you any pussy. And once you think you right on the verge of getting that pussy from them, they just dump your ass. They dismiss you. After you done gone out on multiple dates with them, spent hours talking on the phone with them, walking in the park with them, all the non-sexual shit. After they gotten their feel of your non-sexual companionship and your free meals from you, other financial favors from you, they just dump your ass. Basically, they play the same game that the lying womanizer plays. Only they their their objective is to exclusively gain your non-sexual companionship. The lying womanizer, again, his objective is to exclusively gain a woman's sexual companionship. So lying womanizers and manipulative time wasters are two sides of the same coin. And you got a bunch of them, as I speak, out here in society playing games with each other. You got a lying woman that has to pretending like he wants both a woman's sexual and non-sexual companionship when he really just wants the sexual. You got a man of time where she's pretending like she wants both a man's sexual and non-sexual companionship, but she really just wants the non-sexual. And it's, it's like a tennis match or a game of chess. They each trying to play their game and achieve their objective. And whoever gets their objective wins. Whoever achieves the objective first wins. Who does, whoever does it loses. I ain't into all them games, man. I, I'm, I, I'm not into games. I'm not into manipulative head games with women. I'm into bold, straightforward truth. That's the mold one way, man. I tell women if all I wanted to do, if the only reason I want to share a woman's company is because I want her to suck my dick every Thursday night, I tell a woman that I want her to suck my dick every Thursday night. And I have had women in my past who suck my dick on a schedule like that. If I know all I want to do 
is spend 95% of my time with a woman just fucking and maybe 5% of the time non-sexually, I let women know that straight up. And they adhere to my program. Why do you think a lot of women got platonic friends, man? Are you naive to that? Are you naive to that? See, I'm going to give you a little secret. Alan Roger Carey going to give you a little tip that most of my clients know. See, if a woman already has two or more male platonic friends that give her a boatload of non-sexual attention and companionship, that's when she's going to be the most open to having a fuck buddy that just fucks her. Because she don't need... What she need non-sexual attention and companionship from me for when she got five male platonic friends that provide her with that shit? Or like I already told you, the women who were in relationships that are fucked. That's what their husbands were for. That's what their fiancés were for. That's what their boyfriends were for. I was just there to give dick. You understand that? I was just there to give dick. <laughs> I'll tell you another thing related to that. For those who, who do online dating, like you on sites like Tinder and Match.com, and a lot of these other online dating apps. You ever see a really good looking woman on like say match.com and it says 36 and you look at the picture, you're like, damn, she's a good looking woman. How the fuck is she single? And she might even have in her profile suggesting that she's single and lonely and looking for the right man. That bitch ain't single. Well, she might be single as in unmarried, but if y'all think she ain't fucking somebody, <laughs> insert dog face here. I told a client recently, I had him laughing about that, man. Well, I had them both laughing, but I had his eyebrows raised because I told him, I said, man, I can't tell you how many times I've been on an online dating app and talked to a woman and got a woman to admit that she had a fuck buddy. The main reason why a lot of these women are on, on sites like Match.com, Plenty of Fish, eHarmony, and all that shit, they looking for someone to give them a significant amount of non-sexual attention and companionship. They ain't looking for no dick. Believe that shit. Now, I have met a few women on Tinder that were that were looking for dick. So I will say Tinder. You got some women on Tinder that are looking for just straight up dick. But even on Tinder, you got women that are primarily looking for non-sexual companionship. Them women already fucking somebody. Cause I've had I've had phone sex with a number of these women. And while either while I'm having phone sex with them or right after we finish having phone sex, I'll get them to admit. I say, you know you fucking somebody. I don't believe you on this site and you ain't got no man on your life. Sure enough, they'll they'll resist for a few minutes, then they'll say, Okay, yeah, I got this one guy named John. Whenever he comes in town from Dallas, yeah, he fucks me like I'm his personal rag doll. And he slaps me on the face with his dick and comes in my mouth. Then he just leaves. But he never takes me out to the movies. He never takes me out to dinner. All he does is just fuck me. And I'm just tired of it. But I'll be like, but you still fucking that motherfucker, ain't you? Well, you still fucking that motherfucker, ain't you? Well, yeah, because he do fuck me right. But he don't give me no non-sexual attention. So keep that in mind if you're a fan of online dating. Most of these women online, or again, who are on Match.com, what are the black people meet, Plenty of Fish, eHarmony, I don't know what all these, Tinder, all of them. Man, anytime you see a woman that's good looking, like really good looking, but she tries to paint this picture like she's totally single and lonely and I haven't found Mr. Right yet. That's bullshit. That woman got at least one fuck buddy in her life already, if not two or three. I've talked to a couple women that admitted to me they had like as many as like three fuck buddies. But guess what? Them fuck buddies weren't spending no time with them non-sexually, which is why they're on online sites looking for a man. That's what a fuck buddy is, if you don't understand that. That's what a fuck buddy is. A fuck buddy is somebody you just hook up with the fuck. They don't go to the movies with you and go to dinner and lunch with you on a regular basis and all that other walk in the park bullshit. When I met a woman as a fuck buddy, all we did was fuck, man. Now, every blue moon, we might have done something non-sexually, but not on no regular basis. That's what a fuck buddy is. Now, let me clarify. 
Not all non-monogamous relationships are fuck buddy relationships. So let me make that clear. Some people tend to get those confused and conflated. Not all non-monogamous relationships are fuck buddy relationships. A fuck buddy relationship, as I just told you, that's when you hook up with somebody just to fuck. Y'all pretty much don't do anything non-sexually with each other at all. Y'all just hook up with each other just to fuck. But there are men and women who have, like, say, an open marriage or what they now call a polyamorous marriage or a polyamorous or open relationship where they're non-monogamous, but they're still spending time with each other both sexually and non-sexually. That's different. Polyamory is different than fuck buddy. Yeah, polyamory is when you spending time with someone both sexually and non-sexually, but it's just that your relationship is not strictly monogamous. So a polyamorous sexual relationship is different than a fuck buddy. I've had both. I've had a lot of fuck buddy relationships with women, and I've had at least a handful of polyamorous relationships with women. Where me and a woman, we did spend time both sexually and non-sexually, but we were non-monogamous. So I wanna I wanna make that clear. But again, man, my main point is, particularly if you like a podcast host, you're a pickup artist, or you call yourself a dating coach. And let me repeat that, you call yourself a dating coach. If you buy into one of these three beliefs, in my mind, you don't really know women. At least you don't know them to the level that I do. And I'm going to re repeat the three beliefs again. If you believe that it is a mandatory prerequisite to make a woman feel like you have feelings for her and to provoke her to have feelings for you before you have sex with her for the first time, you don't really know women. You don't really know women. If you think an emotional attachment is a mandatory prerequisite for getting women in bed, you don't know women. At least not to the level that I do. Number two, if you strongly believe that you have to wine and dine women and spend significant amounts of money on women, particularly women who are sevens, eights, nines, and tens, as a mandatory prerequisite to getting in bed, you don't really know women. Trust me. For every five to ten guys that's whining and dining a woman who's an eight, nine, or ten, there's one motherfucker in her life that she fucking for free. Believe that shit. Believe that shit. For every five to ten motherfuckers that's whining and dining a woman and spending a lot of money on a woman to get her in bed, there's going to be at least one motherfucker in that woman's life that she fucking for free. Believe that shit. Third, you guys who believe that you have to spend a significant amount of time with a woman non-sexually in addition to sexually in order to get a woman in bed or at minimum give a woman the misleading impression that you value her non-sexual attention in addition to her sexual attention if you believe that's a mandatory prerequisite you don't know women i ain't gonna say you don't know them at all but you don't know them to the level that i do because that's bullshit again just about every woman i've had casual sex with in my life starting with the age of 22 I told them straight up that all I wanted to do was fuck them. I told them straight up that all I wanted to do was fuck them. And most of them did for the first few minutes. They gave me negative feedback. They, they gave me some criticism, some insults. But I still ended up fucking those women. Either that same day I approached them or days later or weeks later or in some cases two or three months later, I still ended up fucking those women. I'll give you one example before I go, before I wrap up. There was one woman I met, this was, I think, in 1990. I met a woman at a fashion show. She was a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me scratch that. Delta Sigma Theta. She was a Delta. She was a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. And um, I approached her like that. I told her that all I wanted to do was fuck her. All I wanted to do was fuck her. Man... We was on the phone. I met her in person, but then we, in our first phone conversation, that's when I told her, I said, all I want to do is fuck. She went off on me, man. She did everything short of just cursing me out. She told me never to call her again. All that shit. She called me an asshole. She said I had no class. All that shit. So I left her alone. 
I didn't try to, you know, offer any rebuttal or responses to her criticisms and insults. I just was like, okay. That's another free tip for y'all. Don't argue with a woman when she criticizes you and insults you. Just be like, okay. That's how I was. I was just like, okay. Left alone. Who calls me about four and a half, five weeks later? Who calls me about four and a half to five weeks later? Begging me to fuck her. Begging me. And I ain't even exaggerating when I said that. This bitch was begging me to fuck her. Why? Because she thought I was going to back down from my stance. She thought I was going to issue some kind of apology to her. And when she saw that I was man enough to hold my ground, that I had strong backbone, that I wasn't going to back down from what I said initially, I wasn't going to apologize for what I said initially, she caved in. I fucked the shit out of her, man. I fucked her mouth so vigorously, my balls was slapping her chin. Matter of fact, we had a phone call a couple years ago because we connected on Facebook and I reminded her that. I said, remember when I was fucking your mouth and my balls was just hitting your motherfucking chin? And she was just saying, you're so nasty, Ellie. You're so nasty. You're just so nasty. Yeah, you got that right. Real man here, man. Real man here. I don't have to lie to women and bullshit them to get their pussy wet. I just tell them the bold, straightforward truth. And I have my way. Marinate on that, my friends. Marinate on that. Yes, sir. Say it again. Yes, sir. Who's the king? Alan, you're the king. Say it again. Alan, you're the king. <laughs> you're dominating me. Say it again. Alan, you're dominating me right now. Mode one. Mode one. Daddy, can I go, please? You're the king. Say it again. Oh, my king. Oh, you're the fucking king. Yes. 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 Oh. You're the king, Alan. A.K.A. the king of verbal seduction. You know, it's the tone of your voice. How... Seductive. Your intonations are the vibrations that you could just reach out over the phone lines and stroke a woman's breast just by the sound of your voice. How you could make her pussy so wet just by the sound of your voice. That's actually very hot. So you said my show was what? I said your show is powerful. Oh, say it again. Your show is powerful. I bet the king would fuck me really good. Alan Roger Curry. Oh, yeah. Who's the king? Alan Roger Curry. The king. The king. The king. 